fire starter. I'm a wildfire. Hit you like a prize fire. Ooh, baby, I'm a wildfire. Straight from the block, blow, I cannot be stopped. I'm a wild child. Hit you with the high All right, today we're gonna look at everybody's favorite movement or most everybody's favorite movement. Um, this is an international holiday on basically every Monday in every gym in America and probably worldwide. We're gonna look at the bench press. All right, today we're gonna go over three different things in regards to the bench press. One, the setup of the equipment as well as your body. Kind of where do you want everything? How do you want to move your body to be able to set yourself up properly? Number two is going to be the execution and the points of performance that you want to focus on while performing the movement. And number three, we're going to talk about the accessory movements, some other things that you want to consider doing to help build a bigger bench press. All right, so the first thing you want to do before we're even going to move the bench anywhere or where we're going to place the barbell, if you want to prevent yourself from sliding, up or down the bench while you're doing the movement, you wanna make sure that you can take a band and just loop it around the bench. That's gonna put the band going right down the center. It's gonna grab onto your clothes, gonna grab on everything and stop you from moving forwards or backwards as you unrack the barbell and perform the reps. Second thing we're gonna talk about is where we want the height of the J cups in relation to your arm. You definitely don't want the J cups super low, although that might seem safe because you're always gonna be able to kind of put, them, put the barbell back in there if you start to fail a rep but we wanna keep our elbow when our hands are on the bar at about 120 degrees, 115 to 120 degrees. That way, when you go to press that barbell out, you're using a very small range of motion. It's not gonna take really any effort, but it's going to clear the bar about an inch above the J cup. The next thing we wanna talk about is where you wanna line up your body and the bench in relation to the bar. I like to have a couple inches of the bench actually extend past the bar in that direction. So actually pushing underneath the bar. And then when I lay back, <clears throat> I'm gonna roll the bar forwards in the J cup. So it's at the very edge of the J cup. I'm gonna do this very gently. I don't want the bar pinned in the back. That way I know that when the bar is forward and hitting the lip of the J cup, I'm gonna put my eyes pretty much directly underneath that barbell, right? So I don't want my head too far back. I also don't want it too far forwards in terms of being able to unrack the bar. So for me, I like my eyes to be directly underneath the barbell. That allows me to unrack the bar and when I pull it into position to bench, it's, I know it's gonna be clear of the J cup so I don't have to worry about the barbell or the weights hitting the J cups on the way up and down. The next thing we wanna focus on is the lateral position of the bench. You wanna make sure that you are not too far to the left or right when you set it up underneath the barbell, right? You also wanna make sure that the barbell is centered in the rack when you do this. So the bench should be directly underneath the barbell and your barbell should have an even amount of spacing in terms of its lateral movement left and right across the J cups. That way you can make sure that the bench and the barbell are perfectly lined up with the rig and the J cups. That way when you unrack and begin your reps, again, the plates, the barbell won't be too close to either side that they're gonna click clip something on the way up or down while you're doing the bench press. So one other thing, before you actually begin benching uh, or even while you're warming up, if you're benching by yourself, definitely use a set of safety spotter arms or spotter straps inside of some kind of rack or your other option is just don't ever put clips on the bar that keeps the weight pinned on while you bench, especially if you're by yourself. That gives you the option if you get stuck underneath the bar, you can dip or tip to either side and let the weights fall off. For your grip, before you go to do a rep, I like to put my thumbs right on the edge of the knurl mark, so where it's knurled to where there's no knurling. That's gonna give me an even spacing with each hand. And it's also helpful to be able to look and see, you probably want your hands just on the outside of your shoulders. Okay, so maybe just a little bit wider than shoulder width is gonna be a good spot for a normal bench press. Also important to note, wrap your thumb around the bar when you go to bench. Why do we do that? This is called the suicide grip for a reason. If you are benching with a spotter or without a spotter, the chances that this bar is going to slip out of your hand if your thumb is not wrapped around are very high. And if that happens, even if you have a spotter, they're not gonna be able to get their hands underneath it quick enough and that bar is gonna come down on your face, chest, neck, and cause serious harm, injury, those kind of things. So we wanna avoid that all at all costs, wrap that thumb around the bar. So as we're about to unrack that bar, we've got our thumb wrapped around, we've got the proper spacing. It's also important that you keep your wrist stacked. 
So I don't want to let the bar bend my wrist back and sit on the outside of my palm back here or closer to my fingers where there's nothing underneath to support it. You can put some strain on your wrist. It's also not the strongest position to press from because then as you press, your wrist is going to flex, right? We want to keep that bar directly underneath our radius and ulnar or directly underneath our forearm. That's going to put it in a solid position that every time we press, we're going to get all the power from our chest, from our arms into the bar. The next thing we want to cover in terms of this setup is your upper back. Okay. We want to squeeze our upper back together slightly, almost as if you had a pencil running down the center of your back. You're going to pinch that in there. And what do we mean by that? What are you supposed to be feeling? I know it can be kind of a foreign thing to most people, but if you back yourself up to a wall, put your elbows down at your sides, just like you would for a bench press. And then I want you to push your body away from that wall with your elbows. You're going to feel that squeeze in your back. So just that little bit, it doesn't have to be a 100% crazy effort, just that little squeeze to kind of push yourself away, that's gonna pinch your back and put it in the right position. Okay, so why are we squeezing the back? We wanna take some of that tension then off of the shoulder. Okay, so by retracting our scapula, by pulling back, pinching that pencil back there, we're able to take some tension off the shoulder and again, put ourselves in a less compromised position as we move weight up and down off of our chest. So the next thing we're going to do in terms of the setup, so we've unracked the barbell. Now you want to make sure that before you go down, you're going to try to break that bar in half slightly or uh, externally rotate the arms. And so what that's going to do is position your elbows in just a little bit and keep your shoulder in a less compromised position. Flaring the elbows out when you bring the bar down puts more tension, more stress on both your clavicle or your collarbone, as well as all of the connective tissues and muscles in your shoulder, right? And that's not the primary thing that we want to work. We're not trying to work just those connective tissues or the smaller muscles that are all up here, up in your shoulder. We want to work our chest, we want to work our tricep, and we want to keep the shoulder safe. So winding up or bringing our elbows in slightly is going to do that. It's going to put the bar path or, or begin your bench press for a proper bar path, as well as keep your shoulder in a less compromised position. All right, the next thing you want to do before you actually perform the rep is make sure that your feet are solidly on the ground. Okay, so I like to tell anybody that I coach to keep your full foot on the ground and then slightly press into the floor just like you would be doing for a glute bridge. So maybe that 30, 40, 50% effort of kind of putting some tension into the floor, trying to squeeze your butt just that little bit is going to help you both drive the bar off your chest and keep your whole lower body in a safe position while you do the bench press. The next thing we want to talk about as you start your rep is bar path. Uh, typically a lot of people might be performing a bench press where the bar will drop directly straight down and straight up. That's not the most efficient bar path. That's not the best bar path enabled to, that will enable you to move the most weight and it's not the bar path that's going to give you the safest result while doing the bench press. Your bar path should actually have a slight arc. So a slight arc where it comes forward a little bit towards your belly button as you're coming down but you're still aiming for right around your sternum, right for the bottom of that bench press. So it's gonna arc away from your head towards your sternum, touch down at the bottom right at the sternum is where I like to finish my bench press or perform the downward motion of the bench press. And then as you press off, the same thing's gonna happen on the way up. It's gonna arc back slightly towards your face at the top of the rep. So a couple things to think about while you're actually performing the rep. One, we wanna have those feet driving into the ground the entire time that the bar is moving. So that means on the way down and on the way up. What can happen is if you don't have your feet driven into the floor on the way down or the eccentric portion of the bench press, that when you do actually press off your chest and then you push your feet into the ground, it's gonna launch your hips and your butt up off the, up off the bench. And that's gonna potentially put the bar, uh, move it further or closer to your face or move it in a, a faster arc position. It's gonna take you out of position and you might miss the lift. Uh, it just won't go how you want and it might put you in again, a compromised position. The other thing we wanna think of is as we're going up and down, we just don't wanna let our elbows flare out to the side, right? We also don't need them completely tucked in at our side either. We're gonna find that happy medium where we can keep our elbow in a strong position that's safe for the shoulder and the strongest position that we can to bench press and push off our chest. Okay, once the bar has come down to your chest and you're ready to get it off of there, don't think of just pushing up, right? We also want to think of actually spreading the bar. And one way to think about that is you can come over or practice that. So you can come over to the actual uprights of your, of your bench press or your squat rack area and push your hands on the side and actually press them apart, push against just that little bit to get what it feels like to actually spread apart while you're pressing up. Why try to spread the bar while you're pushing off your chest? 
Well, we just finished our setup where we were able to uh, squeeze our back and get our back in a nice strong position. Now, if we just focus on pushing, no matter what you do to get the bar all the way back up, you're gonna lose some of that squeeze of your back, right? So if the back's tight and I start to push and spread, I'm able to hold that tension in my back, right? I'm able to hold or keep that pencil back there from rolling side to side or falling down out of my back, right? So the reason that we're spreading the bar in half while we press up is to keep the back under tension. Once you bring the barbell all the way up to lockout, it's important to remember why we set the J hooks up the way that we did. Okay, so once the rep is finished or you're done doing a series of reps, you wanna be able to just bring that bar back in quickly into the J cups and back into the uprights. You don't wanna be really timid with pulling the weight further and further back and trying to set it gently into the J cup. So as soon as you finish your rep, that bar can go straight back and straight down. Part of the reason that we do that, again, is to avoid injury. The further that we move our arms away from that good locked in position when we went to do our rep, there's a greater chance of injury, there's a greater chance of problems in your shoulder, there's a greater chance of something going wrong by putting the barbell out of position as it's drifting closer to your forehead. So as soon as that rep's finished, slam it back into the J cup and drop it home. The last thing we wanna talk about is some of those accessory movements for your bench press. Now a lot of people think, oh I just have to get my chest bigger, I need to get my chest bigger, it's a chest movement. That is the, you're not totally wrong when you say that, but it's not the correct way of thinking. So one of the number one muscles we wanna to try to build up strength, build up our muscle mass in is gonna be the tricep. So think of banded tricep extensions, kickbacks, skull crushers, any of those movements that are gonna increase the size and strength of your tricep. The other one, like we mentioned before, our upper back. Being able to hold that position takes some extra strength in your upper back. So think of bent over rows, barbell rows, reverse flies, anything that's gonna cause you uh, to squeeze that pencil like we talked about to be able to squeeze that position hold that position and increase your strength in being able to hold that position if you're benching with a spotter we want to talk a little bit about some spotting techniques there's some common errors you can make if you're a spotter uh, one of those is how you're gonna grab the barbell when you spot and when you go to do the liftoff the best way to grab the barbell that you're gonna be able to hold on to it the easiest is gonna have one hand on the bottom and one hand on the top. And obviously you're gonna do that on the inside of wherever the person benching is gonna have their hands. You want your hands on the inside of there. Why one hand on the bottom, one hand on the top? Think of it like the deadlift, right? You basically have one hand blocking the other hand from letting it roll out and not maintaining the grip on the bar. The other thing we wanna make sure that we do is you're gonna get as close as you can to the bar when you do spot. So I like to have one foot forward on the side of the person's head or right on the side of the bench and then my other foot in the back but this allows me to position myself directly over top of the bar so that I can get a good lift off. When I do lift off, I wanna make sure that I'm the one doing the work on the lift off, right? Because the minute that I'm not, it will require the person benching to potentially lose the position of their back or their elbows or anything like that, right? So as the spotter, if you're gonna do a lift off, make sure that you are doing the majority of the work. When the bar goes down, if the person benching has trouble pressing back up, they, get, they hit a point of failure and they can't do it. Sometimes that barbell can be moving super slow on the way up, right? I like to usually give the person benching about a 1-1000 count if they're completely stuck or if the bar appears to be going backwards before I grab it. I don't rush in to grab it right away, but I also don't wait for five, four, five seconds to uh, grab the barbell, right? I'm gonna wanna give them the, just a one 1,000 count. Clearly they're not gonna get the weight up, so then I'm gonna pull it off of their chest and assist the rest of the way up. I do this for two reasons. One, you don't wanna have stolen valor. You don't wanna steal your buddy's bench press weight, right? Like, so if, if the bar might be moving slow and I can't kinda tell, I'm still gonna give that one 1,000, maybe shift my focus a little bit to see if the bar's still moving. But number two, you don't wanna wait a very long time while that person is struggling. The longer they wait, the longer they have that bar pinned at basically an isometric contraction, or if the bar's slowly going down, the greater the risk for injury. That's why we're not gonna wait for a four or five 1,000 count. Uh, I'm gonna wait for one 1,000, pull the bar off their chest. I'm also not gonna get under the bar and fingertip the bar up. I'm not gonna just give them that little bit of extra help so they can slowly kind of grind through the rep. I don't like doing that because it just increases, again, the risk for injury. The body's telling you, hey, I can't do this. I've hit my max maximum amount of reps or my maximum amount of weight. It's my job as the spotter to help them get the bar off of their chest, off of their body, get it in the rack, and make sure that we have a nice, clean, safe rep.
That was the Bench Press 101 session from Always Train. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, throw in the comments some other stuff that you guys might like to see. And of course, I hope this gives you some just huge gains in the bench press, if at least helps you bench press in a little bit safer manner and helps answer some questions that you might have had about it. Have a good one.